In this tutorial, we'll focus on the Outlines group of controls. We typically start by setting the mode to Outlines Add. Then we move the mouse cursor to one of the image panes and click where we want to start the outline. Each click adds a pin to the outline. The pin appears when the button is pressed down and tracks the mouse cursor until the button is released. As a convenience, you can drag on any pin of the outline you are currently adding. Notice that the pin moves in both panes. You can modify the curviness of an outline with the curviness slider. The curve limit slider imposes a limit on how sharp an angle face switcher will try to smooth. When we finish an outline, we should press the Finish button so that subsequent clicks start a new outline. Switching modes implicitly finishes the outline as well. We're going to draw a second outline inside the first. This is how you represent a hole in an outline. Now, we'll switch modes to Outlines Move. If we drag inside the outer outline, it moves the outline and anything inside it. If we drag on a segment of the outline, it selects and moves only the outline. This behavior is true for the Rotate and Mirror modes as well. As a convenience, you can drag on a single pin to move just that pin. Notice that it only moves in one pane. The select handles allow you to scale an outline or outline and its contents. The corner handles preserve the aspect ratio. Now we'll switch modes to Outline Rotate. If we click somewhere on an image, a pivot point is defined. The pivot point is a green and black circle. We can then move the mouse inside an outline and drag to rotate the outline around the pivot point. The duplicate and delete modes both require that you click on one of the pins of an outline, not on an edge or inside the outline. Now we'll switch modes to Outlines Mirror. If we click someplace inside the outline, it will get flipped across the vertical line that passes through the mouse. 